The fifth plenary meeting of the 7th Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea was held in the building of the headquarters of the Party Central Committee. Between December 28th and 31st, Juche 108 or 2019. Chairman of the Workers' Party of Korea, Kim Jong-un, guided the plenary meeting. Present at the meeting were members and alternate members of the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea and members of the Central Auditing Commission of the party. Also on hand as observers were officials of the Party Central Committee, officials of the ministries and national agencies, chairpersons of the Provincial People's Committees, chairpersons of the Provincial Rural Economic Committees, chairpersons of the City and County Party Committees, and officials of major fields and units and armed forces organs. Chairman Kim Jong-un presided over the plenary meeting upon the authorization of the political bureau of the Party Central Committee. The following agenda items were brought up in the plenary meeting. 1. On the direction of our immediate struggle under the prevailing situation at Men Abroad. 2. On the organizational issue. 3. On amending and supplementing the collection of slogans of the Party Central Committee. 4 on grandly commemorating the 75th founding anniversary of the Workers' Party of Korea. The plenary meeting discussed the first agenda item. Chairman Kim Jong-un made a historic report on the first agenda item. He said the past eight months passed since the fourth plenary meeting of the 7th Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea were a continuation of the very powerful struggle and dynamic advance and continued during the period, our party has established and maintained the correct domestic and foreign political lines or was putting stress on the urgent demand and interests of our people and the sovereignty and security of the state and waged a state struggle to implement them. Chairman Kim Jong-un put forward a revolutionary line on making frontal breakthrough operations in keeping with the demand of the present situation and the developing revolution. Appreciating that our own force with self-reliance and self-development as the motive force has been further strengthened in the tense struggle to implement the decision of the fourth plenary meeting of the seventh party central committee, he pointed out that our state and people have greatly demonstrated the daring spirit of making a progress and leap forward despite the difficulties and the tremendous potentialities in response to the appeal of the party on bringing about a great upsurge in socialist construction, holding higher the banner of self-reliance, he said. The challenges we have faced for the past few months were harsh and dangerous ones that others would not have stood even a day. However, no hardships could stop or delay the dash of the Korean people advancing undauntedly, forming a solid integral whole, but gigantic achievements were constantly made in bolstering up the strength of the state and the defense capability. Chairman Kim Jong-un also said some successes have been achieved in the economic construction as well. Analyzing the trend of the present prevailing situation, he made it clear that the real intention of the United States is to seek after its political and diplomatic profits while tossing about under the signboard of dialogue and negotiations and at the same time to keep applying sanctions to gradually exhaust and weaken our strength. And he stressed that we made a firmer resolve not to battle the security and dignity of our state and the future security for anything, Chairman Kim Jong-un said. As the United States is taking a gangster-like attitude, forcing a demand against the fundamental interests of our state, the deadlock between the DPRK and the United States inevitably has to take on a protracted character. We'll never allow the disgraceful United States to use the DPRK US dialogue for dishonest purpose, but go over to a shocking real action to make it completely pay for the sufferings our people have so far undergone and the deterred development. Without hard life and struggle, is it impossible to win a great victory? Victory of revolution is inevitable, but it cannot be achieved without any obstacle and hardship. The further we strengthen our own power, 
and the more wealth we create on the basis of self-reliance and self-sufficiency, the greater trouble the enemy will have, and the earlier the day of victory of socialism be brought so much. All the party organizations and officials should shoulder the important duty given by the Times with pleasure and make frontal breakthrough operations to totally foil the sanctions and blockade of the enemy with the might of self-reliance. Let us overcome all the difficulties in the way of our advance through frontal breakthrough operations. This is the slogan of struggle the whole party and the entire people should hold today. The economy is the main front in today's frontal breakthrough operations, he said, and presented an urgent task of the economic sector at present to fully meet the demand for the economic development and the people's living by readjusting the economic foundation of the country and mobilizing the possible productive potentiality. Chairman Kim Jong-un put forward important tasks to straighten the economic work system and order. He presented innovative measures and specific ideas to readjust the overall structures to promote economic development and enhance the role of officials and indicated realistic ways to push ahead with the work for improving the economic management on their basis. Chairman Kim Jong-un set forth concrete tasks for major industrial sectors of the national economy. He stressed the need to improve science, education and public health. He underscored the need to conduct a vigorous movement for increased production and economy and raising quality, protect the ecological environment and take thorough measures to prevent natural disasters. He also stressed the need to guarantee our grand frontal breakthrough operations politically and diplomatically and militarily. He advanced important tasks to take offensive measures to reliably ensure the sovereignty and security of our state on the basis of making a deep analysis of the grave situation prevailing on the Korean Peninsula and the present structure of complicated international relations. He pointed out that over the past 70 odd years, the United States has defined our state as the enemy, axis of evil, and object of preemptive nuclear attack, and applied the most barbaric and inhumane sanctions and sustained nuclear threat against it. And owing to the U.S. hostile policy toward the DPRK, the situation of the Korean Peninsula becomes more dangerous and serious. He said, over the past two years alone, we have taken preemptive crucial measures of suspending nuclear tests and intercontinental ballistic rocket test firing and scrapping nuclear testing ground for building confidence between the DPRK and the United States. In those years, far from responding it with due measures, however, the United States conducted big and small joint military drills its president had promised to stop on tens of occasions, shipped latest war equipment into South Korea to threaten us militarily, and took measures of independent sanctions tens of times, proving to the world once again that there is no change in the ambition to suffocate our system. Under the condition, there is no need for us to be unilaterally confined to the commitment without any partner to implement anymore. It also pours cold water on the nuclear disarmament worldwide and our efforts for prevention of nuclear proliferation. As we have already clarified, the prevailing situation proves that we should foster our strength as much as possible so that the hostile forces cannot violate our sovereignty and security and thus defend ourselves. And this is the only way for us to go without let up and without hesitation, though difficult. In this way, he made clear the Workers' Party of Korea's stand of policy toward the United States. Kim Jong-un also said it is the steadfast goal of defense upbuilding of our party to have an invincible military muscle nobody can challenge and keep strengthening it and continued. We should make any forces there not to use their arms against us. This is a pivotal plan and firm will of the defense upbuilding of the Workers' Party of Korea. 
we should more actively develop strategic weapons. Due to the gangster-like acts of the United States, there is no change at all in our external surroundings either when we cover the road of simultaneous development of two fronts or when we are waging a struggle to concentrate efforts on the economic construction. But the hostile acts and nuclear threat and blackmail are still augmented. Under the condition, we cannot give up the future security, seeing the visible economic successes and welfare alone. Before long, the world will see a new strategic weapon to be possessed by the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Now that we have seen through the real intention of the United States, there is no need to hesitate expecting the United States to lift its sanctions. If the United States pursues its hostile policy toward the TPRK, the Korean Peninsula will not be denuclearized forever. We'll continue to vigorously make the essential and prerequisite strategic weapons for security of the state until the U.S. hostility toward the TPRK is cancelled and the durable and solid peace system established on the Korean Peninsula. We'll constantly and reliably keep the regular mobilized posture of powerful nuclear deterrence which can contain the nuclear threat of the United States and guarantee our long-term security. The width and depth of our strength and deterrence will be coordinated according to the U.S. stand toward the TPRK in the future. It is a great success that we came to have the absolute weapons possessed by big powers. But it is a greater pleasure to see that promising talented scientists and technicians have grown in the course. This is the success our party values all the more. The fields of defense, scientific research and munitions industry should maintain the principle of self-reliance and zuche and perfectly support the party's line on defense are building with loyalty under the slogan of higher and faster in order to hit the goals of all stages which have already been issued. Chairman Kim Jong-un proposed issues to intensify the struggle to sweep away the anti-socialist and non-socialist practices in the whole party, state and society, strengthen the work of the working people's organizations and establish strong moral discipline in the whole society. He stressed the need to strengthen the party, the staff of the revolution, and extremely enhance its leadership ability. He said, Our revolution is vigorously advancing, but the challenges of the hostile forces to it are tenacious, and the difficulties we are facing are great. For winning the final victory of the revolution and making our great people well off, our party has made the determination to wage an arduous and protracted struggle again. Our party will continue to deal a hard blow at the United States and the hostile forces following it. In the protracted harsh environment unprecedented in history, our people have learned how to live with their own strength, how to defeat the enemy and overcome the difficulties, and how to defend their dignity and rights. It is our strong revolutionary faith to defend the dignity of the country and defeat imperialism through self-reliance-based prosperity, even by tightening our belts. When all of us continue to wage a vigorous struggle with indomitable revolutionary faith and fervent patriotism and in the indefatigable fighting spirit, the difficulties will be overcome and we'll see the day of new victory when the song We Are the Happiest in the World becomes the real life of the entire people across the country, he confidently said, and ardently called upon all to vigorously open the route of advance of victory by becoming pioneers and standard bearers in the present glorious struggle to make a frontal breakthrough of the grave difficulties in the way of the revolution and realize the ambition and ideal of building a powerful socialist country. Written speeches on the first agenda item were made at the plenary meeting. The speakers expressed their great emotion and excitement of having a grand map of operations and blueprint of the party central committee to open up a broad avenue for a new victory in building a powerful socialist country and fully supported the outstanding frontal breakthrough idea, strategy and action program of Chairman Kim Jong-un on accomplishing the great cause of prosperity based on self-reliance at an early date by resolutely tiding over all sorts of challenges and difficulties in the way of advance of socialist construction. 
the plenary meeting made a profound and active study and discussion on the draft decision on the first agenda item, and then the decision was adopted with a unanimous approval. The decisions are as follows. First, We'll readjust the economic foundation of the country and mobilize possible productive potentiality and thus fully meet the demand for the economic development and the people's living. Second, we'll attach importance to science and technology and improve education and public health representing the socialist system. Third, we'll establish the state crisis control system to protect the ecological environment and cope with the natural disasters. Fourth, we'll guarantee victory of the frontal breakthrough operations with powerful political and diplomatic and military offensives. Fifth, we'll strengthen the struggle against anti-socialist and non-socialist practices, establish moral discipline, and conduct proper ideological education among the working people's organizations. Sixth, we'll strengthen the party, the staff of the revolution, and extremely enhance its leadership ability. Seventh, the officials, the leading personnel of the revolution, will make strenuous efforts to fulfill their responsibility and duty for the party, revolution and people in the frontal breakthrough operations to bridge over the difficulties in the way of advance of socialist construction. Eighth, all levels of party organizations and political organs will do organizational and political work to implement the decision properly, and the presidium of the Supreme People's Assembly, the cabinet and other organs concerned will take practical measures to thoroughly implement the tasks outlined in the decision. The plenary meeting dealt with the organizational issue, the second agenda item. Members and alternate members of the political bureau of the party central committee were recalled and elected to fill vacancies. Vice chairmen of the party central committee were discharged and elected. Members and alternate members of the party central committee were recalled and elected to fill vacancies. Chairman of the inspection commission of the party central committee was elected and its members were recalled and elected to fill vacancies. Directors of some departments of the party central committee were discharged and appointed. First deputy department directors of the party central committee were appointed. Chairpersons of provincial party committees were discharged and appointed. Leading officials of state organs were discharged and appointed. The plenary meeting discussed and decided an issue on amending and supplementing the collection of slogans of the party central committee as the third agenda item. It discussed an issue on grandly commemorating the 75th founding anniversary of the Workers' Party of Korea as the fourth agenda item before adopting a relevant decision. Concluding the plenary meeting, Chairman Kim Jong-un referred to the significance and importance of the plenary meeting in making a frontal breakthrough of the prevailing phase and developing the Korean revolution to a fresh upsurge. And he stressed that the main idea and spirit of the fifth plenary meeting of the 7th Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea calls for making frontal breakthrough operations without waiting for the situation to be better with folded arms. In order to make revolution, the revolutionaries should accept the priceless trust of the people as the whole of their life, he said, and ardently called for becoming faithful and diligent servants of the people working harder and harder for such wonderful people as ours. Chairman Kim Jong-un had a picture taken with the members of the central leadership organ of the party in the significant venue of the historic fifth plenary meeting of the seventh party central committee.